humanitarian relief allowed in. For more on the humanitarian situation in Gaza, I spoke to Adam Ramadan. He's the deputy director of Rebuilding Alliance. That's an organization working to give aid to Palestinians in war-torn neighborhoods. Thank you very much for joining us. I know many of your colleagues have been working uh, in Gaza. How would you describe the situation in the territory right now? The situation in Gaza is really, really difficult to bear. Um, when, we, when we talk to our partners on a daily basis, you know, we're, we're looking at them, we're, we're hearing their stories, you know, just from a physical presence, you see that they're, they're losing weight and they're losing about half, half of their body weight just because of the lack of humanitarian aid that's entering. Uh, currently, we're managing over 20 kitchens in Gaza and we're trying to feed over 50,000 people a day in partnership with the World Food Program. And, you know, Rebuilding Alliance has been in Gaza for 20 years. Given the years of experience you have there, all the food kitchens that you're working with, we know that there have been extreme difficulties of bringing aid into the territory. What are your teams on the ground experiencing? Are, are they also having trouble now getting the food that they need, the supplies that they need? Yeah, so b before the war in Gaza, you know, our community, uh, we were cooking about 4,000 meals a day as part of our commitment to give back to the community. And since the escalation of, you know, the conflict and the war, we've ramped up our efforts to provide aid, you know, cooking almost 50,000 meals a day. And now with the holy month of Ramadan, uh, we're aiming to reach 100,000 meals a day. And with the limited aid getting into Rafah, you know, we work, our partnership with the World Food Program, they provide us food commodities, but also majority of our food items are locally sourced. And we are hearing feedback from our partners, um, you know, the difficulties in obtaining these these items and, and the sourcing of the supplies and the, the increase in uh, cost and, you know, even some of the aid that's arriving into, into uh, Rafah is often raw and or moldy due to the additional challenges of uh, waiting to enter into, into Gaza. You mentioned, of course, that this and, is um, now the, you know, the holy we're, month we're of Ramadan. People there obviously are celebrating in at least some way. What has marking the holy month and, and these celebrations looked like in the midst of such devastation in Gaza? Well, our Palestinian people in Gaza are so resilient. They're not letting anything, you know, come in their way of providing for the displaced families in Rafah. They're coming together as a community. We're seeing doctors, teachers, uh, people of all different, you know, professional backgrounds come together, willing to, to use their personal resources and funds to ensure that the, their families around them and their neighbors around them and those displaced have food to eat. And they're breaking... Uh, fast together. It's such a beautiful thing and it's bringing me to tears just to think about, you know, such circumstances that they're in and they're able to come together and, and empower each other to, to provide what's best for themselves. And at the same time, it's very devastating to see that the war is still continuing up, up upon this point. And it's, you know, it's now more than ever that we should be calling for a ceasefire and opening more, uh, or more crossings into Gaza. We need to bring more aid um, we need to bring aid into any any point into Gaza at this point because people are starving. We're having reports in the north that no one, you know, people are not receiving food. Your organization is called Rebuilding Alliance. Part of what you do is help rebuild war-torn communities. You know, when it comes to Gaza, 85 percent of people are now displaced. More than half of buildings have been destroyed. What would a rebuilding effort even look like in Gaza? Uh, essentially, right now, our main focus is to, to provide humanitarian aid to the communities affected by the conflict. We understand that the rebuilding process will take a really, uh, take a lot of effort and a really long time. Uh, we started back in 2003 um, with uh, Rachel Corey when she was killed by the Israeli uh, um, bulldozer standing in front of a house trying to protect the house that housed her. Uh, rebuilding Alliance started by rebuilding that house that she stood to protect against. And it took, it took a while. And before I let you go, I, I know you've actually just returned from the West Bank. You were there with a bipartisan delegation of U.S. Congress members. What was that experience like? And, and what did you hear from those lawmakers? What was discussed during that trip? Yeah, part of, uh, part of our advocacy team, we bring U U.S. congressional staff members to the West Bank in Jerusalem. You know, we offer this opportunity for them to witness firsthand the realities faced by Palestinians on a daily basis. Uh, since October 7, there's been noticeable increase in security checkpoints, heightened military presence, um, tensions, 
uh, between the Palestinians and the, uh, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. Uh, access into Jerusalem has been severely restricted to, to Palestinians. Work permits have been stripped from the Palestinians. So we're seeing a huge increase of poverty in the West Bank and in Jerusalem, uh, mainly affecting the Palestinian, uh, the Israeli Arabs. So we're hoping that this, the experiences that they learned post October 7th will definitely push for um, a peace uh, between Israel and Palestine. Adam Ramadan with the Rebuilding Alliance. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you.